Welcome to the Sci-Fi Movie Recap Channel Today I will show you a South Korean sci-fi film, the first Korean space blockbuster directed and written by Joe Sung He don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enjoy watching. From a suffocating earth choking on its own pollution, workers board tethered space elevators to a large, round orbiting space junkyard owned by UTS, a sort of corporate United Nations. In space, this international consortium of scavengers eke out a living by using ships equipped with pitons, grapplers and tow cables to collect space garbage for living money. The work is hard, fast and dangerous, but 130 years of humanity's presence in space have left Earth orbit an endless supply of space debris, including a giant deadly cloud of cosmic garbage, and deadly nanobots, in Lagrange space between the Earth and the Moon. The UTS space station is run by artificially youthful, 150-something-year-old UTS CEO James Sullivan, Richard Armitage, whose dream of terraforming Mars with a perfect society makes him the perfect love child of Elon Musk and Bond villain Hugo Drax. Note, Lagrange is an orbital slot where the fixed gravitational attraction between two larger bodies provides a stable, balanced orbit. This is a real thing in celestial mechanics. The movie's future imagines a scenario where decades of dead satellites and spent space weapons have accelerated Kessler syndrome, where the smashing together of objects at high orbital speeds causes a chain reaction. 2013's Gravity illustrates a scientifically questionable, if emotionally correct depiction of Kessler syndrome. In the real world, recent Russian missile interception tests on inactive satellites have also massively contributed to this ongoing problem. One of the best among this association of space pirates is the spaceship Victory and its motley crew of colorful characters, Captain Jang, Kim Tae-ri, a rootless, hard-drinking girl who once tried to assassinate Sullivan, pilot Kim Tae-ho, Song jung ki a former genius commander in the UTS Armed Forces who resigned after a massacre left him permanently disillusioned, and ship's engineer Tiger Park, Jin seon kyu a former drug dealer fleeing prosecution on Earth. Rounding out the crew is a robot named Bubs, Yu Hei Jin, the ship's maintenance droid who is saving money for gender confirmation modifications, think Rogue One's K2 so but greedy as well. The crew's dreams of scoring big are forever overshadowed by the cloud of debt that follows them wherever they go, barely earning them money to feed themselves. While robot Bubs hopes expensive skin grafts will finally help it transition to female, pilot Kim needs funds to help locate his lost adopted daughter, who was separated from him during a disastrous cosmic collision. The lost girl can be located by UTS tracking resources, but only for the right price, of course. After outracing several other scrap collector sweepers for a prized ship drifting dangerously close to the Lagrangian debris cloud, the Victory snags the vessel and tows it in for salvage. One of the many international competitors include a handsome Frenchman named Pierre, Kevin Dockery, who has an unrequited crush on Captain Jang. Taking the vessel in, the crew does an inspection of the hull, when they see movement in a cargo hold full of white spheres. Shining a light on the movement within the found vessel's cargo hold, they come across a little girl in a spacesuit, Yi Rin Park, and immediately take her inside, assuming her to be orphaned. After cleaning her up, the crew hears a falsified UTS bulletin warning of a dangerous, child-shaped robot with a built-in thermonuclear device named Dorothy, who has escaped from government custody. UTS also offers a handsome reward for the child's return, however, a fringe terrorist group, the Black Foxes, also seek the girl for a reward as well. Bubs and Tiger immediately warm up to the child, despite the danger of her possibly exploding on them. Captain Jang is a bit more cautious, as his traumatized veteran, and parent, Taeho, who wants nothing to do with Dorothy. Taeho unsentimentally suggests negotiations with the Black Foxes, since UTS often cheats non-citizens like themselves, something he knows all too well trying to locate his daughter. Nervous that every move Dorothy makes might set her off, Captain Jang and particularly Taeho choose to give the little girl a wide berth. However, Bubs and Tiger get even closer to the new passenger, ignoring the question of whether she's a robot weapon or not. There are some cute comic moments when the child's threat of a sneeze or a fart are assumed to be the weapon arming itself. Meanwhile, the ship's former drug-dealing mechanic Tiger has become like an uncle to the little girl, unafraid to play with her, and show her the affection the others withhold. Naturally Dorothy loves Tiger's long dreadlocks and tattoos. Dorothy further ingratiates herself to the crew by drawing crayon portraits of them as well. One of the more touching scenes comes when Dorothy bonds with the cynical, greedy ship's robot Bubs. She immediately refers to Bubs with a feminine pronoun. The android self-identifies as female, and is surprisingly moved by Dorothy's acute perception. Bubs can't believe that Dorothy is a robot because her skin grafts look too perfect. The two girls further bond over a makeup session as Bubs applies insane levels of lipstick, rouge and eyeshadow to the little girl, 
Using a voice disguising device, Teho places a call to the Black Wolves and arranges a pickup at a crowded nightclub on the UTS station. The girl for $2 million, no questions asked. Before they can get to the rendezvous, they are harassed by a police spacecraft and are boarded for inspection. With Dorothy hidden in the toilet compartment, the cop has a wad of cash placed in his hand by one of the crew, which Captain Jang points out was captured on security cameras and might be interpreted as accepting a bribe. The flustered cop quickly leaves, and the crew make their scheduled rendezvous at the club, though some are having second thoughts. Needless to say, the trade goes south. The crew deliver an empty sack, realizing Dorothy has somehow escaped and is loose in the club. Hidden soldiers spot the child, whose eyes turn an eerie shade of blue as she envelops herself in a protective shield. During the confusion, Captain Jang realizes that one of the people calling out for Dorothy referred to her by the Korean name of Kot Nim. The crew eventually finds Dorothy and takes her back to the ship. They revive the unconscious Kot Nim, who awakens with the sound of a healthy fart, thus earning her bub's new moniker of Little Fart Machine. Jang tells her crew what some of them have suspected already, Kot Nim is not a robot, she is a human girl modified with nanobots which give her amazing abilities, such as creating shields, and speeding up growth in plants. Kot Nim was given the nanoprobes by her physician father in a desperate attempt to save her life, she was born with a congenital condition. Her father didn't anticipate her system becoming a fertile ground for the nanobots, which now gives her these superhuman abilities. During the interrogation of a failed operative, UTS CEO James Sullivan reveals that he wants to crash the massive orbiting UTS space station junkyard directly into the Earth, rendering the planet uninhabitable. With the bulk of humanity dead on a dying Earth, Sullivan will then have an ideally sized, hand-picked human colony for permanent settlement of Mars. Kot Nim's farmed nanoprobes have been used to quickly terraform Mars, while the remaining nanobots in Kot Nim's system, a threat to Sullivan's plan, will be destroyed by a hydrogen bomb in the station's core after he kidnaps her. Threatening to harm a kid equals instant audience boos and hisses. Teho begins to appreciate Kot Nim as the two of them sell fresh tomatoes grown on the ship with the help of her nanobots, earning both of them a few needed bucks. Masked individuals begin to follow Kot Nim, leading to an all-out brawl between the crew of the Victory and the Black Foxes. After the Victory crew and the Black Foxes knock the crap out of each other for a while, gotta fill that action quotient, after all, the Damasked gang are revealed to be fellow space sweepers from different nations. Turns out the Black Foxes are actually trying to protect Kot Nim from Sullivan's plan. The former rivals now realize they have a common cause, and the Black Foxes agree to locate Kot Nim's pop and reunite them as soon as possible. Things quickly go to hell shortly after Kot Nim is briefly reunited with her dad, as UTS soldiers, clad in high-tech exoskeletal armor, ambush the reunion, killing Kot Nim's dad as well as some of the Black Foxes, yet keeping the Victory crew alive, for a final bribe attempt. CEO Sullivan makes one last appeal to Teho for his own adopted daughter, who is believed to be still alive in space. Sullivan doubles the Black Fox's earlier offer, $4 million for Kot Nim, no questions asked. For that, Teho will be made a UTS citizen, effective immediately, and have ample funds to locate his daughter, which can be done in a matter of minutes for the right price. A broken Teho accepts Sullivan's Faustian bargain, and takes the obscene pile of cash before him. Offering to split the now doubled bounty with his shipmates, Teho learns they want nothing to do with Sullivan's blood money, and are focused solely on rescuing Kot Nim. Note, the final Faustian deal between Teho and Sullivan, as the younger man surrenders to his own desperation for money, is well acted and executed. It is easily the most dramatically potent scene in the entire film, which is otherwise kept at a shallower, Star Wars level of action adventure for the most part. Ashamed by his own part in Kot Nim's abduction, Teho changes his mind and goes all in with his shipmates, who formulate a plan to rescue Kot Nim from the core of the UTS space station. Once the bomb detonates and kills Kot Nim, the station itself will begin to fall towards Earth, causing an extinction-level event in its impact. Boarding the station with some black foxes as backup, the crew successfully fights their way into the core and locates the kidnapped Kot Nim. However, Jang and a battle-weary tiger soon realize that the hydrogen bomb cannot be defused. Their only hope is to fly Kot Nim to a minimum safe distance of 5,032 kilometers away from the bomb, while the Victory crew risks their own lives to remove the bomb from the station's core, which they hope to detonate harmlessly in space. As they plan to take Kot Nim to safety, they are interrupted by a vicious, cybernetic super-soldier. Tiger seals himself into an airlock with the killer cyborg so the others will be safe. After a lengthy combat, a bloodied, exhausted Tiger finally ejects the female super-soldier into the void. Tiger then gives Bubs her now-severed hand, a gag lifted directly from Star Trek, First Contact. They are good to go. The film's final space battle becomes a wild, 
but visually confusing Star Wars meets gravity-style mess as the remaining Black Fox scavengers take on the UTS fighter ships with grappling hooks and tow cables, while the Victory takes the hydrogen bomb as far out into space as possible. Meanwhile, Sullivan beams his image down to Earth to make a godlike holographic announcement of his plan to move humanity to Mars, which is interrupted by Captain Jang playing audio of Sullivan's earlier bribe to Teo, which reveals his plan to destroy Earth in order to resettle a new master race on a terraformed Mars. This turns the public tide against Sullivan. Sullivan then goes full Darth Vader. Flying his own combat craft, Sullivan wants to personally kill Teho for double-crossing him and take Kotnim by force. Intercepting the victory, he learns that Kotnim is not on board, she has been taken to safety earlier by Captain Pierre, who would do anything for Captain Jang, even sing terrible love songs. Sullivan is thwarted once again. Teho and Tiger take the controls and manage to give the ship's boosters a massive surge, putting victory, with the bomb aboard, while out of range of Kot Nim. The crew is ready to die as the bomb goes off. However, Kot Nim has summoned a massive swarm of nanobots from the surrounding Lagrangian cloud to envelop the ship and protect it from the blast. Kot Nim's newfound family aboard the victory are safe. Sullivan is killed in the explosion. The force will be with you, always, the epilogue offers a mega happy ending for all and sets up a possible sequel for this crew of characters. Bubs finally affords her new female skin graphs, now played by Hyang Gi Kim, choosing to retain her masculine-sounding voice for now. Kot Nim is using her super horticultural abilities to replant trees on the resuscitating earth, as the crew welcomes her into their family. Teho is also able to psychically connect with Kot Nim's mind and say a final farewell to his own lost daughter, whom he learns didn't survive long after the accident. Saying his goodbye to the past, Teho embraces the future with his new family. Note, good point about Kot Nim and company cleaning up Earth instead of trying to fully terraform Mars. Mars lacks a magnetic field, and terraforming attempts might not last too long without one. As Neil deGrasse Tyson pointed out, it makes much more sense to fix a mismanaged ecology than to try and create an entirely new one elsewhere.